Includes. They allow to structure your code and keep everything in order. Today we will cover separating your code in different source files. We will explore what the compiler and what the linker is doing with these files. And after that we will have a look at the difference of definition and declaration. Hi, my name is Zen and welcome to my channel. So at the beginning we will just have a look at the, the file that we have written the last time. So you might remember we have written a simple class definition and the definition of our main. And today we want to separate this because usually it's good practice to not have everything in a single source file. In order to do that, we will create the file that will hold the class line. So what we're going to do is we create a new file, which is called line.cpp and a second file, which is called um, line.h. So the line.h file will be used by both main.cpp and line.cpp, whereas the line.cpp file will only be used by itself. What we now need to do is to get rid of this definition here in the main.cpp file and copy this one or and put it into line.h. This is now still the same definition as it was before and we can reuse this definition because now you see here it's already complaining that the identifier is undefined but we can change that in by just including the line.h file. At this point, we can just jump back and compile our program because this definition is already including everything that we need. So we go to our console and type in Clank++ and at this point we want to compile main.cpp and we name our output as usually program. So we, you see the program pops up and we can just run this like the last time and it returns us all the length again. So why did we create this second file which is line.cpp? So what we here have here now is both a definition and a declaration of things. So we declare what exists and define it in one go. So the beginning usually is the declaration, which needs to be shared. And after that, this becoming the definition, what actually happens in real code. So good practice usually is to abstract any implementation, which means that the implementation should be just singular to a specific file and you should not share it around or you might even hide it in a pre-compiled library. Because the user, if he's not seeing it, he usually cannot change it, he doesn't access values that he shouldn't access, and so on and so forth. So it's a very good practice from the get-go to start separating the things that the user need from the things that the user doesn't need. In this case, the user just needs to know that he needs to create the class using two values, and he needs to know that the length can be returned as a float value by calling it a class get length. How this is internally, internally calculated, the user doesn't really care about. So what we're going to do is we take these functions, the constructor and the get length function, and move them into our uh, line uh, .cpp. Now what we additionally need to do is to include also in this file our declaration of our line class. So this really does get shared. Here we now can get rid of the definition because as we said the user should not care, care about it and shouldn't even know it. Now what is still missing here is that we say that this definitions that they belong to the class line t. So in order to do that, we add the specifier line t at the beginning. And now the compiler recognizes that they belong to the class line t. 
In order to compile this one, we need now to tell the compiler that it needs to compile the program and the additional line.cpp source file, which in this case we just add, and it should work again. So it does work, and at this point we can just run the program, and everything's all right. So what is now hidden a little bit from us is that the Clang++ compiler in this case is compiling both of the programs and after compiling, linking them together in additional, uh, in the final outcome of the compiler. So what we need, to, or what we need to understand is that these are separate steps. So it's compiling the first file, compiling the second file, and then in the third step, linking everything together. As I said previously, the include is for the compiler just replacing this specific line by the content of line.h. So in order to prove that to you, we can just take the exact definition that or declaration that we did there and put it here and put it at the main.cpp file, save everything and recompile the program and it should still work totally fine. So it does to, uh, work totally fine, but there is now no coupling anymore between main.cpp and line.cpp because we just uh, said that this definition here of the class, how it looks like, is still the same. So line.h at this case was empty and there are no includes more over the code. However, this is very bad practice. I was just wanted to show you that it actually does work no matter how often you have this class here defined, it will still work as soon as it's in different source files. This is very important because there's something in C++ which is so-called the one definition rule. The compiler is only allowed to see the definition of each class once per source file or once per file that he is processing. So if I would now add here the class a second time, the compiler will complain that this definition here is superfluous or that there's an additional definition at this point. And here we see in line 15, he complains about redefinition of line T, which is totally fine. We did expect something like that. But still, it's very interesting that exactly the definition across several source files is totally fine. But as I said, it's really bad practice. You should keep the definition here in the line.h file and include it. Because if you include it, you can be sure that the definition here is exactly the same for all of the files and the class looks the same across your complete program. What is a still a little bit uh, tricky to understand is that the H file here, in order to really understand the uh, diff difference between definition and declaration, this H file here defines a class. So the class line underscore T is defined in the H file but the methods which belong to that class, in this case, the constructor and the method get length, they are only declared. So they are declared in a way that the compiler knows something like that exists, but he doesn't really know what the content of this is. The content is later on defined in the line.cpp. So we have here a class definition which declares the methods and the methods are later defined in the line.cpp. That's all for today. Turn on your machine and get started. Tell me what you want to hear about next and as always, enjoy coding.